Hey, everybody. Hope you're doing well. Um, give it a minute or so. And let me just get my slides up, but good to see everybody trickling in. All righty, well, this is a super short session today. It's only 15 minutes, so let's go ahead and dive in. Um, welcome to Get Started with Scribe. This is our weekly onboarding session for any new users or users who might just need a refresher. My name is Meg. I am a product marketer here at Scribe, and I'm super excited to, you know, e-meet you all and get the chance to walk you through the Scribe platform. So um, today's agenda is pretty to the point. We'll spend a few minutes in the slides today just giving a quick overview about Scribe and some of the problems that it solves for you and what you can use it for. Then we'll spend the bulk of the time actually doing a demo of Scribe. And of course, as you have questions, feel free to pop them in the chat. Unfortunately, this is a Zoom webinar, so you can't take yourself off mute. So if you do have a question, please, please, please put it in the chat so I can be sure to get to you. All right, so what is Scribe? Scribe automatically creates step-by-step -step guides for any process. Um, when you think about what we are replacing, uh, we're replacing this. This probably looks um, familiar, maybe sent a shiver down your spine, but this is what most people have always, um, what most people have always done when it comes to actually documenting processes and teaching other folks how to do something on their computer, right? So it's a lot of screenshots. It's a lot of writing text instructions. Um, these things on average take 15 minutes to build. I have talked to so many users who say they, they used to take hours for one of these. Um, obviously, the longer the process and the more important the process, the longer this would take. So we are here to get rid of this whole headache for you, and we're replacing it with Scribe. Um, this Scribe that I'm showing you on the slides here um, took my colleague Lenny two minutes to build. Uh, our average Scribe actually only takes 54 seconds, and that is totally including the capture, edit, and share process. So what do people use Scribe for? We have a, a bunch of use cases to go through with you all. Um, the first one that you see here is just tool adoption. So uh, we've got tons of users whose companies bought some tool and they're in charge of now rolling it out to the rest of their employee base. And Scribe can really help with that. We've got tons of customer facing teams who are using Scribe to actually help answer their clients' questions and help you know, implement or onboard clients. Um, process documentation is really encapsulating all those people who do this formally. And by formally, I mean who are creating SOPs to do, um, to show people and actually like standardize and write down these processes. We also have tons of people who create scribes to help onboard new hires, right? So these are frontline managers who don't have a bunch of time to create onboarding documentation, but want to make sure that their new hires know how to use all the tools at their fingertips. The one in the top right is my personal favorite, and this is just the informal helping teammates use case. So this is whenever I get a question from somebody I work with asking um, a question on how to do something in Asana or um, Notion, something like that, instead of having to write out my answer or a screen record myself, I just send them a scribe. All right, so these are the core use cases that we see. Um, you probably came to scribe with one of these in mind or maybe none of these in mind. And hopefully as you start using the tool, you can really see how powerful it is across all parts of your role. All right, so what happens when you actually create a scribe. So there's really three components of scribing. We call them capture, edit, and share. So to capture, um, we've got two different tools that people can use. All users have at their fingertips for free, either access to the Chrome or Edge extension. So this is a browser extension. For our pro and enterprise users, we also have a desktop app that you can download for Windows or Mac computers, and this helps um, you create scribes on any desktop-based applications. Edit um, comes after you've actually recorded the scribe. You might want to add a couple of customizations to it. I'll walk you through that in just a moment. And lastly, we offer a variety of ways that you can actually share the scribe because we don't just create documentation for fun. We create it because somebody needs to see it. Um, so we provide a lot of different sharing options. 
All right. So that's that. Hopefully that was helpful just to orient you before we dive into an example here. But let me go ahead and reshare my screen. And I wanted to walk you all through an example from start to finish. Uh, and so the example that I figured we'd start with is doing something in Google Sheets because spreadsheets can be quite confusing to a lot of people and most folks are familiar with the Google Suite. So hopefully this is a good example. So the example that I have for you all today is somebody's just asked me how to make a pie chart in Google Sheets. So all I have to do is I'm going to come up here to our extension. You'll notice that I'm using Chrome here. So I use the Chrome extension and I'm just going to click start recording from the dropdown. Now you'll see my screen says capture has started and you'll see this small blinking recorder down in the bottom. These are called on-screen recording controls and they offer a bunch of different things. Like if you need to pause the recording or you made a mistake and just want to delete it, um, this is where you'll go for all of those. And then all you have to do is actually just go through the task, right? So I'm gonna do that. I'm gonna insert, I'm gonna insert a chart and there it is. So there's my, my lovely pie chart. If I wanted to change the chart into let's say a 3D, I could do that and that's it. I've created the pie chart. I've shown what I needed to show. And now I'm just gonna come back up here either to the extension here, which is blinking or down here on the on-screen controls, which are also blinking and click complete recording. And in just a second, a new tab will open with your scribe. And so this is the magic of scribe. What I just did was take a few seconds to just run through a process with the scribe recorder on and it grabbed all of my screenshots. It followed what I clicked. It wrote these instructions for me and it actually tracked my cursor clicks as well. So that's it. I just created a first scribe. That took me 36 seconds right here. So as you can see, it's super quick. And if I wanted to, I could actually just send this off right now um, and share it with whoever, but I'll go ahead and walk through some of the editing uh, capabilities that you have. So I highly recommend for every single scribe that you make, you, you add a title to it. Um, as a default, we always just call it name of tool that you are on plus workflow. So as you start creating more and more, it'll find you'll find it harder to actually find your scribes. Um, so I would always add a title. You can also add a little description and you can also change the color of your icon as well. You'll notice it, it grabs the tool that you were on as well as the URL that you started on. And then there's a couple of things that you can do. So you can always add steps here and you'll notice there's a variety of different things that you can do from here. So if you actually wanted to, like you missed a step and needed to add it, you wanted to add a tip, like make sure you're logged in, something like that. You could always do that. You can add it the text on each step. So here I could say like, um, highlight the cells you want to create a chart on. So you can edit the text. For pro and enterprise users, you can also edit the screenshots themselves. You could do that by selecting this little screenshot icon in the top right hand corner. And from here, you could do a couple of things. You can crop your image, you can add annotations. So I'll just add a little arrow. From here, you can also move the cursor. So if you wanted to center it, you can also redact any sensitive information. So if you're creating scribes that include customer information or personal information, the manual redaction tool allows you just to basically blur out anything you don't want in your screenshots. Like I said, screenshot editing is a pro and enterprise feature. Uh, when you're done, just click done and you'll notice the screenshots automatically update. All right, any questions so far? Let me just take a peek at the chat. No, we're cruising, good. All right, so um, if you wanted to delete the steps like this one, you'll see I, I made an accidental click here. I could just click delete step and just delete. All right, and that's it. So once I'm done, I can click done and I'm ready to share. All I have to do is click the share button in the top right hand corner. And before I actually share, um, just one thing to note, every scribe that you create by default is private. So before you share it or show it to anybody, you wanna pop these sharing settings into something else. I would recommend shareable with link. And then from here, you're good to go. So you can copy the URL and send this to people. So this is great if you're getting questions asked via email or Slack or Teams, something like that. You can also um, add people's emails directly to this. 
When you do that, and you'll see I have a team on Scribe right here, um, you also have the option to determine whether these folks should just have view access to your Scribe, or if you want them actually to be able to collaborate and add edits to the same Scribe, just switch this into Can Edit. And what this means is that anybody else who's on my Scribe team um, in my workspace can now edit this Scribe. Next up, you can also embed your Scribes. This essentially means that you're putting your Scribe in, as an iframe into another tool. Here's an example of what the embedded looks like. So you can imagine this living directly in your Confluence, your um, SharePoints, your Notions, your Gurus, your Codas, whatever it is. As long as the tool that you're using allows for an iframe embed, you can go ahead and embed your Scribes directly in there. The beauty of this is that when you make a change on the scribe, it automatically updates to wherever it's been embedded. So you can ensure that your knowledge base or wiki, whatever you're using, will always be up to date. Last but not least, you can also export your scribe. So all users can export scribes as PDFs. And then our pro and enterprise users can also export as HTML markdown. This is great if you want to put the the content into another tool and actually change the font and change the colors so that matches your company brand. We also have a direct integration with Confluence if um, you're a Confluence user. All right, so we've just covered the three main workflows. It's capture, edit, and share. Um, in just a couple of seconds, you'll see that you've turned this big hairy process into a beautiful step-by-step -step guide that you can share with one person or many people. The last thing I wanted to show you today, there's actually two things. Um, you'll see this add to page button right here. I wanted to just to show you the functionality that we have called pages. It's essentially a blank document that you can use to house multiple scribes into it and add additional customizations such as text. You can add videos here. You can add screenshots into this. And the value of this is that you're essentially um, creating one document with multiple scribes in it. Uh, you can have up to, I think it's like 150 scribes in here. And this becomes this perfect kind of go-to place where multiple scribes for the same or similar process live and they pop out right here on the side. So it's super easy for folks to follow along. All right, that's pages. And then the last thing that I wanted to cover is kind of the boring stuff. And to be honest, this is all about to change, which is very exciting. But I did want to just walk you through what the workspace is, because this is kind of your, your home base in Scribe. Um, so there's a couple of things to note. We've got a foldering system that'll be on the left-hand side here. If you're just by yourself in Scribe, as in you are not on a team, this will be a lot more simple, and it will just have all of your own Scribes um, listed here that you can run quick searches on or something like that. If you do have team members like myself who are joining you in Scribe and you're all working together, um, then you would rec I would recommend you use a foldering system and you'll see multiple people from your company create the Scribes. And that's about it. Those are like the basics, I would say. I'll go ahead and stop sharing. Um, looks like we still don't have any questions, which is great. Um, then that's perfect. We're almost at time. Um, I'm going to go ahead and drop in this um, resource for you. Let me just grab it. This is our quick start guide. If you don't have it already, I highly recommend um, you take a look at this. Um, sorry, Zoom. It's complicated. Okay. That's a quick start guide. This is a great place to go. We've got a bunch of really helpful resources and different scribes on um, that you might find useful for anything that we covered today, as well as a great little user onboarding video if you need some more help. And I'm always here as a resource. Uh, I can be reached at meg at scribehow.com. Feel free to reach out to me with any questions, or you can always go to support at scribehow.com to get in contact with our support team. But Welcome to Scribe. We're so happy to have you. Um, good luck with everything and please don't hesitate to reach out. Thank you.